is there any biblical support for this kind of tongues? We can agree and disagree on a lot, particularly as it relates to tongues and things of the Holy Spirit. But I don't think that anyone can in good conscience, especially in biblical, biblical conscience, state that what we're seeing here is supported by the scripture. That's the power of God, church. She just received the gift of tongues. Speak it out loud. Receive it in Jesus' name. Now, a couple of things. First of all, this is complete gibberish, without question. Some people get upset when we say that something is gibberish, but that's gibberish. This is literally someone just making a sound. And then notice also, after they make this sound, then he lays hands on them and says, receive it. Receive what? What were they just doing? I thought what they were just doing, that was the spirit working in them. So then after they are speaking in tongues, which is in tongues, but afterwards, then you lay hands on them and say, receive it, and they fall out. If this doesn't make any sense to you, it's because it shouldn't make sense. This is not supported in the Bible. Pray out loud in the Holy Ghost. I love the, the different sounds of the gift of tongues. When he says, I love the different sounds of the gift of tongues, no, it's not the different sounds. It's supposed to be the different languages. How do I know? Well, when we go to the Bible, let's go to Acts, where we first see tongues, Acts 2, and notice what's happening here. In Acts 2, it says that, uh, let's start here in verse 6. And when this sound occurred, this is when they're speaking in these languages, the very first time it's poured out, which, by the way, I think ought to be the model. But it says, and when, they, when this sound occurred, the crowd came together and were bewildered because each one of them was hearing them speak la luntone, which is they were speaking in his own languages. So they heard them speaking in a language that they were familiar with. And they go through the different languages, the dialects and different regions that these people are from. They were all amazed and astonished, saying, why are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we each hear them in our own language to which we were born? And he goes to the list, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia and Judea. And so the point is, they hear them speaking in these different languages not the different sounds. They're, they are literally saying something. And then Peter gets up in the midst of them. In verse 14, he says, take it a stand. Peter with the other 11, because there were 12, they received it on, on the day of Pentecost and started speaking these languages, raised his voice and declared to them, men of Judea, all you who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give heed to my words, for these men are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. And so he's going through and speaking about what Joel says. And notice that if we keep reading, Peter is telling them what they're saying. He's explaining to the audience what was saying. As he's saying verbatim what this person spoke, what this apostle spoke in this language, what that apostle spoke in that language, verbatim? No, because obviously they can't say it the exact way verbatim, depending upon the language they were speaking with. But he's giving an overview. What is he doing? He's literally giving interpretation. By the way, guys, this is the only time in the Bible, the only time where someone speaks in a language and then another person gets up and gives interpretation. This is the only account of it that we have in the Bible. Nowhere else. Now, there's a gift of interpretation or there is there is this gifting to interpret or to explain. That's literally what the word means. And there has to be the accompanying of these languages for the hearer, not only the hearer, but those that are hearing outside, there has to be this explanation, this understanding. The person that's hearing needs to understand what's being said. The person that's saying needs to understand what's being said. And those that are around will also have to have some sort of understanding. We know this is biblical. The problem is this is not happening here. Did you receive it? Come here. You want to pray in tongues, lift your hands, close your eyes, light her tongue on fire, Lord. That's it, that's it, that's it. So he's asking her, did you receive it? She says yes, and then he then he, he didn't actually touch her mouth, but puts his hand over her mouth and then tells the Lord, light her, light her tongue on fire. But I thought she already received it, and so, so now she's giving a demonstration. There's nothing biblical about this, absolutely nothing biblical. It's his opposite of biblical. It is not in the scriptures. That's the part that we need to deal with. 
what's in the scriptures and what's not. Doing things that we are not commanded, or even shown to or pushed to do by the scriptures, that becomes a problem because we start getting people to behave in ways that they should not. They end up making a mockery, whether they intend to or not, whether it's intentional or unintentional, it doesn't matter. The effect is the same, and it begins to promote other people to, one, misunderstand the Bible and to misuse a gift that they actually don't have. And I'm familiar with this because, grown, not growing up, but while I, the first church that I've attended, the first churches, they were Pentecostal, charismatic, and there were people that were wanting to get the Holy Spirit, and the evidence of that would be them speaking in tongues. And they didn't think they had the Holy Spirit or were saved because they did not have this ability. So we would have these tarrying services, these services where they would come down and wait for the, the filling of the Holy Spirit that would be shown out in them speaking in these languages. And there were people, countless numbers of people that would go down and would not speak in tongues. And they left distraught thinking that I don't have the Holy Spirit, thinking also I, I might not even be saved. Well, Paul begs a different. Paul says that everybody in 1 Corinthians 12 he says that all of us who are in Christ, all of us have been baptized into one body. That means if you've been saved for one minute, one day, one week, month, year, one decade, all of us have been baptized into the body, into the spirit. And so that's that's the one fatal problem or the one dangerous problem that you'll get people to believe that they are not saved or don't have the Holy Spirit. Getting them to feel like they are second class citizens in the body. We don't have any second class citizens. Matter of fact, it's exactly what Paul is trying to get across in 1 Corinthians 12, that there's no part of the body that is of less importance. There's no part of the body that's more important, no part of the body that's deserving of more honor or less honor. But all of us, all the giftings are to build up the body, not yourself, but to build up the body. And so what we're seeing here out of David Hernandez, it's just not biblical at all. That's it, that's it, that's it. Close your eyes. Lord, release that sound on them now. That's the power of God on you, man. We're Pentecostal people of God. We believe in speaking in tongues. You can believe in speaking in tongues, but you're not doing it biblically. You're not doing it the way the Bible says to do it. And when you want to go outside of that, when you want to deviate from that, well, then you end up having a deviant form of Christianity. And that is the problem. You don't have to do that. Why can't the word of God in your language that you understand, why can't that be enough? Because people look for signs. People look for wonders. People look for things to want to make them feel good. But Jesus called that a, an adulterous and wicked generation. And you've been given a sign. If you're looking for one, it was him in the tomb and that he rose. The problem is that this sort of thing leads to all sorts of foolishness. What sort of foolishness do I mean? Well, what about someone speaking in tongues at a wedding? You would be hard pressed to say that that is biblical. You'd be hard pressed to find an example. The reason why we see that, well, first of all, let's just deal why why it's unbiblical. One, there has to be an interpreter. Let's go to what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14. Now, irrespective of what you think about tongues, you would have to agree that the public display of tongues has to be accompanied by an interpreter. So let's go to verse 27, chapter 14. If anyone speaks in a tongue, now I, I believe that this is um, uh, tongues or actual languages, but it doesn't even matter for the sake of this argument. It should be by two or at the most three and each in turn. And one must interpret. And this word right here literally means to explain. Interpret means to explain to give an understanding of what's being said. So to, so, so to explain, there needs to be an interpreter. In none of these clips that we've seen, there is an interpreter there. He says, uh, but there must be, but if there is no interpreter, I'm sorry, he must keep silent in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. So if there's going to be some tongue speaking, there needs to be somebody to interpret. If there's no interpretation, Paul says, zip it, hush, be quiet. And the sad part is you've got a pastor, David Hernandez, who's leading people to believe that this is okay. Where's the interpreter? You've got a Bible. Even if you disagree, even if you think that tongues are not a language, I disagree because they are. I believe they really are a language. We see the example. But even if you disagree, you cannot disagree and say that they should not be, if they're done publicly, accompanied by an interpreter. And none of these clips there were. 
And this is what's happening because you give the impression, you give the license, you give the validity for anyone else to go and do the same thing. So if we're going to be biblical, let's be biblical. That means by the Bible, what the Bible says. If we're going to do something that is not in the Bible and base it off of a feeling or experience, my friends, that is the very definition of unbiblical. Amen.